This is a common theme throughout the scripture. We'll even see it, for example, in the book of Esther. We already did a series on that before, where even the people that were plotting against the Jews, it wound up, their plans wound up helping the Jews in the end. You see, when God is with you, your enemies don't just lose. They don't stand a chance. Even the things that they do to try to hurt you only help your cause, only further God's will. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today, we are continuing our series in 1 Samuel, and this, partic this one comes from Samuel 18, 1 Samuel 18, 10 through 11. Now it came about on the next day that an evil spirit from God rushed upon Saul, and he raved in the midst of his house while David was playing the harp with his hand as usual, and a spear was in Saul's hand. Then Saul hurled the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David escaped from his presence twice. Hmm. You find that interesting? I do, because especially at this point in time, at this point in human history, Saul's the king. Why didn't he just kill him? Why didn't he just openly kill him and admit that he wanted to kill him because he could get away with it because he was the king? Why didn't Saul just order some of his men to go out and kill David? This would not have been a ridiculous thing or something that was unprecedented in the ancient world. It happened all the time. Once you saw anybody as a rival to your throne, nobody would have thought twice for you just going and eliminating them. Saul still has a conscience. Saul, Saul still has a sense of what's right and wrong. As, as far as he has fallen, as badly as his character has been maimed at this point, Saul still believes in right and wrong. He does. He still believes that there are certain things that he is supposed to do. He still understands that killing David would be incorrect. And I think probably the most important thing here is Saul understands that even though he's king, he has limitations, and there are things that he's not supposed to do. Even though he has been burned many times by doing things his own way as opposed to doing it God's way, he does still instinctively understand there are certain things he is not supposed to do. And he knows that killing David would be wrong. The problem is... Instead of that manifesting itself in him doing the right thing, he does what will be perceived as the right thing. This is Saul's character flaw. You, you could almost say it was his singular character flaw because all of the problems, all the bad things that Saul does, all seem to go back to he just cares way too much about what other people think about him. Saul did not want people to think that he's a bad, jealous person that was going to kill David just for the heck of it because he was jealous about his prestige and he didn't want a rival to his throne. Saul doesn't want that. And that's why he tries to act as though, oh, an evil spirit has taken over me. Ah, I'm going to kill David with a spear. He tries to play it off as though he's not the villain. And I think that's because Saul, even though he's not willing to actually take the hard step and do the right thing, he genuinely doesn't want to be, and he doesn't see himself as a villain. I think it's the same problem that we find ourselves in a lot. We know that something we're doing is wrong, but we think, well, because nobody knows about it, and because nobody can see that I'm doing it, no one will think poorly about me, then I can go ahead and do it. I can get away with it. It's a bad idea. Never works out well. 
Because God always knows. God knew what was in Saul's heart. He knew exactly what Saul was trying to do here. But unfortunately, Saul was so jealous, so envious, so prideful, so envious of David, and, and so eager to protect his throne, he is willing to kill a person that has been nothing but kind and helpful to him. And ultimately, that was not something that was going to be easily overcome. This passage continues on in 1 Samuel 18, verses 12 through 13. Now Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, but had left Saul. So Saul removed him from his presence and appointed him as his commander of a thousand, and he went out and came before the people. It's an interesting strategy. I'm just going to let the Philistines kill him. I'm going to send him out as a commander. I'm going to send him out to battle over and over again, and hopefully David will wind up dying at some point. Why is this? Why does Saul, why is he so desperate to see David dead? It's because nothing bothers someone that has fallen from grace, somebody that used to be in God's good favor and now isn't, than seeing somebody that still is. Nothing bothers a fallen Christian more than a faithful Christian. Because unlike somebody that's never been a Christian, the fallen Christian knows that that person is living the way that they're supposed to. Saul understands that David is doing what Saul's supposed to be doing now. And nothing makes a fake look more fake than having the real deal set up next to it. Like Fake diamonds, usually, it's hard to tell whether it's fake or not. And then when you put a real diamond next to it, you can kind of see, or at least better understand, even to somebody who's not an expert in that stuff, once you can see the real thing and what that's supposed to look like, it's a lot easier to spot the fake. That's what David is to Saul. He's the real diamond. Saul's just pretending to be. And because he is aware of that and understands how that looks to other people, Saul decides that we got to do something to get rid of David. Let's look at 1 Samuel 18, 14 through 16. David was successful in all his ways, for the Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he was very successful, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, for he would go out into battle and return before them. Isn't it amazing? Even Saul's plot to kill David worked in David's favor. Saul was so greedy and so angry of David's prestige that his reaction to this was send him out to battle so that he would die and not be a rival to him anymore. And what does that do? What is the end result? That David gets more famous and more popular and the people love him even more now than they did beforehand because Saul was so angry that he was ga gaining more fame and notoriety that he decided the best way to deal with that was just to eliminate him. How, in, how incredible is that? That even a plot against David's life worked out in his favor. This is a common theme throughout the scripture. We'll even see it, for example, in the book of Esther. We already did a series on that before. Where even the people that were plotting against the Jews, it wound up, their plans wound up helping the Jews in the end. You see, when God is with you, your enemies don't just lose. They don't stand a chance. Even the things that they do to try to hurt you only help your cause, only further God's will. You can choose to serve God's will in one of two ways. You can either help facilitate it or you can work against it, but you're going to be fulfilling his will one way or the other. That's not optional. Because when God is with you, your enemies really don't stand a chance. Everything that they do only helps your cause. You see, it wasn't just Saul's sin, but also David's righteousness that caused this to come to effect. Because that strategy, or th that thing that God helped cause to happen, the providence of, of David succeeding and being good and, and gaining fame and notoriety and, and gaining favor with the people, that worked 
partly because God was working against Saul, but also because David was working for God as well. He had an incredible sense of duty. He was doing the best that he could for his country and to defend God's kingdom and his people. And so all those things worked in tandem. Yeah, Saul's sin was part of the cause of it, but you know what? David doing the right thing was a big part of it too. And I think that's really the message of the day. We can't control what other people do. In a couple days, we're going to be voting, and there are going to be a lot of people that make very bad decisions in voting. We can't control that. As Gandalf would say, all you can do is decide what to do with the time that is given to you. Stay the course, friends. Hey, if you liked this video, then you should press the like button. I mean, that's literally what it's there for. If you liked the video but didn't hit the like button, then it's like getting great service but not tipping your waiter. Except liking is free, and so is subscribing and hitting the notification bell. So if you're enjoying my content but not liking my video, there's really only one explanation. It's because I'm black, isn't it?